In this problem, we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this function at this point here. So to find the equation of the tangent line, we need two things. We need a point and we need a slope. So they already give us the point, so we just need the slope. So the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. So we have to start this problem by finding the derivative of this function and then plugging in our x value to actually find the slope. So step one is find the derivative, so y prime. Three is a constant, so it just kind of hangs out. So we have three times, and then the derivative of arcsine is a formula. It's one over the square root of one minus x squared. This is one of the formulas that is worth uh, memorizing. This is the formula it, that is totally, totally worth knowing. So this is the derivative of this function. So this gives us the slope of this function at any x value that we plug in. So let's go ahead and plug in 1 half. So plugging in 1 half, so we get uh, 3 times 1 over the square root of 1 minus, and then our x is 1 half, so 1 over 2 squared. Let's keep going and see if we can simplify this. This is 3 times 1 over, this is 1 minus 1 fourth. So 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. I'm skipping some steps here. So again, this is 1 minus 1 fourth, because 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 4 fourths minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. So that gives us that. And so this is 3 times 1 over. And you can just take the square root of each piece here. So it's the square root of 3 over 2, right? Because the square root of 4 is 2. 1 divided by this means you multiply by the reciprocals. This is 3 times 2 over radical 3. So this is 6 over the square root of 3. So that, my friends, is our m. So our m in this problem is equal to 6 over the square root of 3. I'd be wondering, you know, do you have to rationalize something like this? It doesn't really matter, right? It's totally up to you. If it's bothering you, you can rationalize it. Um, I'm going to do it. Why not? Let's, 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 let's do it. So square root of 3 over square root of 3. This will be 6 square root of 3. Ah, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Look at that. It cleans up. Wow. That was pretty cool. Because now what happens here is you just get 2 square root of 3. So that's a much nicer slope, right? This, this is our slope. A little bit nicer than the fraction. So to rationalize, what you do is you just multiply by 1 in a clever way. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. You get this. 6 over 3 is 2. Boom. All right, let's finish this thing. So to finish, we use a formula. It's called the point-slope formula. The formula is y minus y1 equals m, parentheses, x minus x1. Then you just plug everything in and, and try to, to be careful. So let's see. So this is y minus y1 is pi over 2. So pi over 2. M is this, so 2 square root of 3, 2 square root of 3, then we have x minus 1 half. So that's uh, this is our x1, this is our y1. Just plugging them in to the formula. We're going to go ahead and erase this, and let's keep going here. So I guess now we have to distribute this. So y minus pi over 2 is equal to 2 square root of 3 times x. Minus, when you multiply these, the twos cancel, so you just get minus square root of 3. Last thing to do would be to add pi over 2 to both sides of this equation. So y equals 2 square root of 3 times x minus square root of 3. What a ridiculous answer. Only in calculus, right? This is the only time you see uh, stuff like this. You know, you take a, a class, like, you know, college, an algebra class or something, you don't get answers this ugly. But once you get to calculus, things get... Uh, a little bit, a little bit uglier. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.